45 bone fish hook. Kind of a short, sh uh, short shank, thick wire though. The thread I use is like a UTC 70 or a 6 hot thread. Uh, just one that's going to have some strength, but it's not going to bulk up too much. It's going to allow me to, uh, you know, put a number of materials on. Let's start off by putting some dumbbell eyes, just a small size. I don't want to crowd too much, but I don't want to run it too far down the shank either. The reason being with this fly, and the reason I like dumbbell over bead chain, is because really to get the full effect, in my opinion, is to get that Sam Juan tail pointing straight up. And if you get those dumbbell eyes, that really drives the head of that fly down into the ground. Also keeps the hook riding up, which is helpful when they're picking up off the bottom. But really to get that fish's attention on the bottom is to keep that, uh, that tail pointing up. It's a good fast water fly, it's a good deep water fly. It is not good for really soft, more shallow water, especially when a fish is really keyed in um, <clears throat> on tailing. The reason is, is this fly will make some noise, but if you're fishing, you know, a little bit of a run where uh, it might go down a bit and it's run a little bit quicker, this fly will drop down in a hurry for you. Touch up that zappa gap real quick. All right, now we do tail. Tail on this guy is going to be about two to three times the length of the shank of our hook. Really good at jumping out off the bottom there. You need something that's really going to get that fish's attention, especially when you're throwing it at fish that you know are in some moving water, or deeper water. You want it to really jump out at them. So a little bit of a longer tail helps out. Start up a loop here, dubbing loop. And we'll go with the Cohen's Carp Dub, the uh, Northern Lights Black. It's got a little bit of red in it too. Um, another good one you could throw in would be like a Hare's Ice Dub, the Bloody Black. Um, it's a really good color that I use for this one too. But uh, anything that says carp dub, uh, if you're tying carp flies, why not? It only makes sense. But if any time you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, you know cut me off and ask. Pick them out a little bit. Now we're just kind of building their body. Remember, this can be more of a damsel fly, um, but still a little bit of protein for those fish. Um, <clears throat> you know, like I said, uh, you can catch them on a number of ways, especially I know a handful of you guys in here, if not everybody in here has fished for them before. So you guys kind of know what they're like. They're like a catfish, but a lot smarter. Um, in the sense, you know, they'll eat anything from a, uh, a bluegill to a cigarette butt, any, anywhere in between two. And I've seen them do both of those. <laughs> what brand? <laughs> Cowboy Killers. <laughs> Pretty hardcore fish. Yeah. Alright. And I'm just going to wrap back over that dubbing just a tad, just to kind of smooth out right behind the dumbbell because what I'm going to do there is I'm going to build in a collar here. Um, kind of like streamer hackle right here, streamer saddles, if you will. That's all these are. Uh, we'll find a good one. Nothing too outrageous. That's probably good there. Strip off the soft feathers. Just get them out of the way. We're not going to need them. And I'm not going to use the entire feather, but I want probably...
right around there is where I want to cut it off. Um, that way I'm not getting into stuff that's going to be just way too big on a collar. Um, I'm all about going uh, huge on collars, but don't need to be outrageous. <clears throat> if you get the fly in front of the fish, you've already tricked it. At that point, it's just about getting the take. You can mess around with your uh, colors and your color too. I'll use grizzlies um, or like a yellow and black bard as well. Black's pretty good though. Brad, what kind of leader system do you use when you're fishing? Great question. Um, especially with the fly that's really heavy like this, I'll run a 12 to 13 foot leader um, just to give me as much leeway as I can. Um, and also, uh, you know, for soccer presentation, but also uh, because it's a heavier fly, um, you know, it's a small fly, but it's got that heavy dumbbell. And I'll actually, I'll throw some lead on these things too. Um, that longer leader allows that the weight of that fly to really get itself down and not have to drag as much fly line down with it. You know, if you're fishing a deep pocket where you look straight down and you just see a tail way down there, you know, it might be seven or eight feet deep and you got moving water and you've got to, you can only put it five feet out in front and try to get that drift in, that longer leader will allow that fly to really anchor itself. And are you building your leaders out of like Maxima or something? No, I'll start with uh, an old scrap leader that was a 9 foot, I mean it could be a 0x, it could have been a 7x, um, but I'll start with that base section and I'll build from there and I'll taper it. So I'll start them off with that, you know, 30 to 35 pound butt and then uh, I'll taper them down to about a 12 pound leader. Yeah. Um, now it all kind of depends on, you know, what, what kind of setup you have, you know. This time of year uh, I'm using a 6 weight more often than not. Um, I'm not really targeting big fish this time of year, um, so I'll use a six weight glass rod so I can afford to, you know, <clears throat> on a 10 pound carp I can afford to throw almost a 5x liter with them. Um, it's not ideal, but you can catch them that way because there's so much given that rod. Whereas if you're throwing an eight weight, then, you know, there's a lot more resistance there. Um, you'll want to have more of like a, you know, zero to two x rig. What glass rod you using? Uh, super fine glass, or a stick, six weight. Um, so the last thing I did there, guys, um, was I picked off some of the uh, just the rubber legs on this dub and just got 